Alright. Okay. My light just went out. Okay. Good. Okay. First, I want to talk about emotions. Because I definitely don't think that I'm all there with my emotional maturity. I've come a long ways, but... I used to be so much worse. So when I was 12, I was attending an MK school or a missionary kid school. There were probably only like 13 of us, probably 10 in the middle school and then like three high schoolers just finishing up high school. Everybody had an assignment this one day to get up and read in front of the class. During my turn, during my turn, I decided to emphasize one of the words really goofily and I like looked up when I did it and I met eyes with a student. Like I found it so incredibly awkward that I had met eyes with this student and kind of gone off script and just said this word really funnily. It sent me into the biggest giggle fit and I couldn't stop laughing for minutes. The teacher even got super frustrated and was like, Colin, yep, you can finish that. But I could not stop laughing. I think that's a nervous laughter mixed with something else. I, I, I really can't tell. I, I can't pick it apart. Fast forward four years and I'm at my grandparents' house on furlough from Brazil in the US. It's at the end of furlough, so we're about to leave the US again and go back to Brazil. I'm in the living room with my grandparents, a bunch of other family members, and out of nowhere, I start laughing hysterically like, like I witnessed the funniest thing on earth. But it was about nothing. Nothing had happened. Like I was getting stitches. I mean, I was laughing so hard and other people were like, whatever. And then that laugh immediately turned into a cry. I went from all the way happy to like really sad in an instant. And I go, um, something's wrong, and I had to get up and go leave the room. I have never experienced that before or since, but I knew that it had something to do with going back to Brazil. It had to have. And my emotions got out of control, like wires were crossed out of stress or something. These are all just kind of instances in where I lost control of my emotions. My first week at college, we have to do this assignment where we select videos to go with the topic that we're going to be presenting on. I chose that video. Do you guys know that video of the of the dude running the race and he like pulls a hamstring on the racetrack and his dad has to come help him finish the race? Okay, so I played that video and I start crying, sobbing in front of the class. I, I mean, I'm blubbering. And another classmate had to like take what I was saying and try to interpret my blabber. And my instructor in that class told all the other teachers. Nobody ever made fun of me, which is good. And I did ask some students later what they thought, what their impression was. And a lot of them just didn't even know what to think, but it was noticeable. Ultimately, I, I feel like they understood my heart and they took compassion on me. That's what I think. So I made two really good friends in college, both of whom, both of which are bipolar. They're bipolar. I have not been diagnosed because I haven't even been to the doctor about that, but I can relate so much to my friends who are bipolar and have been diagnosed because a lot of the times we were experiencing the same mood swings. It was like they would synchronize and we were very attuned to each other's emotional state. Coincidentally, those friends are also stoners. They smoke weed really regularly, and I could see how the immediate argument or or even just other thought process there could be that, oh, well, the weed smoking is perpetuating the mental illness, and maybe so, maybe so. But what I notice when I'm sober is that I can go from zero to a hundred like that way quicker than when I'm high. Smoking weed, for me, lessens the rocking of the boat. Because when I'm sober, those, those waves crash hard, and the boat definitely rocks. Weed is able to lessen the impact of those waves and stop that rocking. I don't see how that's different from an antidepressant, but I do totally think that weed can be overused. It can become a mental addiction, which could cause irritability and anger when you're sober. But I will always advocate for weed over antidepressants, and especially alcohol. There is no use for alcohol or benefits. It's a total poison. And I hate, I hate when people clump weed and alcohol together in the same category. I think it shows ignorance and inexperience with those two substances to automatically cl clump them together. When I get angry, even with one beer in me, my anger will go from here to here just with that one beer. But if I get angry when I'm high, it keeps my anger down here. It just keeps it simmering and not building. The two substances have completely different effects. One of them is manufactured scientifically and the other is natural. It's a plant given to us by God. 
do not get drunk with wine. So many Christians want to turn that into an all-encompassing blanket statement and say God clearly says all drugs. He clearly means all drugs. But how do you know? He says wine for a reason because of the absolute danger, absolute danger in attacking your frontal lobe cortex and removing or reducing your inhibitions. The things that inhibit you from impulsively acting. Weed will bring more inhibitions to the frontal cortex and I inhibit my, my natural impulsive instincts way more when I'm high versus being drunk. I, I really hope that I'm making my stance clear. Dude, I used to be that kid that was club his brother in the nose or clothesline his other brother just because I felt like it. It was just an impulse, so why not act on that impulse, huh? I lived my entire life like that for, for way too long, up until I started smoking weed, honestly. And then I had a ton of revelations about my own social impulses and social cues that I'm missing and how embarrassing I had been for so many years. I attribute a lot of my maturity, my growth, and my current internal strength to marijuana, to weed, because of the different angles that it allows me to see situations that I'm in. It took the blinders off, it took the training wheels off, and it gave me a perspective that I'm really bummed a lot of people, more people, don't have. And if I'm told that I frequently misinterpret things or that I'm not what I'm not perceiving is not reality, that I can't know a person's intentions, here are a few examples of when my actions were mirrored out of spite, when my f initial actions did not come from that place in my heart that theirs did. So, there was a holiday last year that I was, I volunteered to cook some steaks for, for my whole family. I had never cooked steaks from the family before, so I found a recipe that involves coating the steak in butter, garlic and thyme, and maybe some salt. Somebody close to me suggested that I throw rosemary on there. I was like, okay, I'm open to that. So whoever bought the groceries bought rosemary and thyme. So I cooked the steaks and <laughs> I made a really big mistake because I should have cooked them in the pan, but instead I did I did it on the grill. So that just caused all of the butter that was coated on to just fall and like fuel the flames. The flames literally got so high that they touched the canopy cover that was like, you know, covered. I had to close the lid really quick and be like, nobody, th nobody saw that, right? Because the flames got so high, dude. There was no use. The garlic and thyme that I put on there, the thyme leaves just burnt into a crisp immediately or fell into the fire. I very quickly saw that there was literally no use to put any of the seasoning or garlic on there because it was just burning into a crisp. The steaks came out so charred and I just like had to act like I did on purpose. But I, it was it was a fire that I was semi-frantically trying to control and keep under wraps. As we sit down to eat, somebody asks me, Colin, would you put on these steaks? And I said, garlic and thyme, because those are the ones that I tried to put on before I realized that there was no use in putting anything else on. I could immediately tell that the person who had suggested the rosemary be put on the steaks internalized me not putting it on the steaks. When I was speaking from direct self-consciousness, instead of explaining the fire that had just happened, I just give a brief summation, garlic and thyme. And it was internalized by more than that person, just that person. I think everybody interpreted my words and my actions in the same way. Check this out. Fast forward one month, I'm assigned to cook breakfast with somebody else in the family who was at that who was at that table. We're cooking breakfast and I, I say, hey, dude, uh, we're, we're doing French toast. You should throw some cinnamon and sugar in the into the French toast mix. <laughs> After we cooked all the breakfast, we sit down to eat and somebody else asks, Hey, so-and-so, what did you put in the French toast, on the French toast? And he just goes, cinnamon. Even though the cinnamon and sugar had been brought out, lids off, he acted like he put the sugar in the mix, but he didn't actually do it. Because he thought that my actions, when I'd flubbed the thyme and the, the rosemary, <laughs> that I had done it out of spite. When my heart was not in the same place that, he, that his was when he did the cinnamon and sugar. Don't tell me I'm misinterpreting. I know he did it to be noticed, he did it to get me back and mirror my actions and give me a taste of my own medicine when really he was the only one drinking the poison that day. I have a hundred thousand more stories just like that. And there's no escaping it. I'm stuck in this loop and God is my only hope right now. 
because only he can actually see my heart. I am meeting that kind of energy everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. That's my episode. Thanks for watching. Peace.